So the figure shows the section of an angle curly. A bending moment of 300 newton meter is applied to the purling in a plane in a plane at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical y axis. If the sense of bending moment is such that its components m max and m y both reduce tension in the positive x y quadrant, calculate the maximum direct stress in the pole. Okay, so this is the angle section uh, given the problem. This is the exercise problem in the book textbook given. Okay, angle section, the cross-sectional dimensions. Okay, we call this uh, as a leg. Okay, the top leg one is the leg. Okay, leg one, leg two. Suppose in the problem it is mentioned like uh, equal leg angle section means equal leg angle section means the dimensions will be same. 100 means here 100 and here also 100. So here you are you are seeing unequal leg angle section, unequal leg angle section. So we are trying to find out the maximum direct stress due to bending. So we have seen the expression yesterday, sigma z is equal to my uh, ixx minus mx ixy divided by ixx into iyy minus ixx square whole multiplied by x plus mx iyy minus uh, my ixy divided by ixx into iyy minus ixy whole ixy square into y, okay? So this is the expression. So we have to find out the sigma is z. So first we need to locate a centroid. Uh, centroid uh, for that, let me divide the rectangle, divide it into two rectangle sections, and then be one and two. So let me take C point as my reference point. Okay, reference point. This is section one, this is section two. Section one area 100 into 10, I have calculated 100 into 10,000 mm square. And A2 area is, this is 115 into 10, A2 is the area. So I, X1 is nothing but the horizontal distance from the reference point 2 to the individual section centroid. So 100 divided by 2 will be 50 millimeter. And X2 is nothing but again from C to the individual section centroid. So 10 by 2 is 5. And for the section 1, y, Y1 distance, the vertical distance from C to the individual section centroid of section 1. So from here to here, so 125 minus 5 will be uh, 120. And Y2 is nothing but 115 divided by 2 for section 2. So we have obtained the values A1, X1, Y1, A2, X2, Y2. We know the formula to find X bar, Y bar. So X bar A1, X1 plus A2, X2 divided by A1 plus A2. Substitute all these values, get X bar to be 25.93 millimeter which is nothing but the location of y y axis from the reference point C. And y bar uh, is a1 y1 plus a2 x2 divided by a1 plus a2, 86.57 millimeter, which is nothing but the location of the x x axis, okay, above C actually, above C. So now we have located, uh, we have got, uh, we have located the central x x and y y axis. Now we need to find out the moment of inertia. So i x x, as we know the formula, BD cube by 12 plus the area into y minus y bar, the whole square. So BD cube by 12, nothing but 100 into 10 cube by 12 plus the area A1 is 1000 into distances y1 minus y bar, the whole square. And for section 2, uh, BD cube by 12, 100 into 115 cube by 12 plus area A2 into y2 minus y bar, the whole square. Then IYY is nothing but db cube by 12. 10 into 100 cube by 12 plus a1 into x1 minus x bar the whole square for the section 1. For section 2 again, d is 115 into 10 cube by 12 plus area a2 into x2 minus x bar the whole square. So substitute the values, you get this answer. Okay. Ixy, a into x minus x bar into y minus y bar. So x1, a1 into x1 minus x bar into y1 minus y bar plus a2 into x2 minus x bar into y2 minus y bar. So substitute all the values here, you will you'll get ixy, ixy. So the given value moment is 3000 Newton meter, which is acting on a plane, uh, which is inclined at 30 degree to the vertical axis, the vertical axis. So if you resolve this m cos 30, m cos 30, which is nothing but the bending moment acting on a yz plane, that gives you a max. So m max is equal to m cos 30, m max is equal to m cos 30. And m 
sine 30, which is acting on the XZ plane, which is nothing but the MY. So the MY is equal to M sine 30, which is nothing but 1.5 meter and millimeter. So I am just keeping all these things in 10 power 6 uh, so that uh, keeping this IXX and IYY, -Y, uh, even IXY also, everything in 10 power 6 so that it gets cancelled in our expression. So this is our expression, <coughs> bending stress expression. So in this expression, you just plug in the values MX, MY, IXX, IYY, then IXY. So after simplification, substituting the values, you get the expression to be sigma Z is equal to 0.27x plus 0.65y. Okay, 65y. Okay, so since the bending moments produces uh, tension in the first quadrant, that is both MX and the MY both are positive, the said in the problem. So the maximum bending moment would be, I mean, uh, will be created or induced, that the direct stress due to bending will be induced at point C. So I'm taking the point C directly, its coordinates, point C coordinate, X coordinate and Y coordinate, it is in the fourth quadrant, that's why X value is negative and Y value is negative. Substitute this X and Y value in this expression, you will get sigma Z to be minus 63.27 Newton per mm square. So this is the maximum stress induced, okay. Sometimes they may ask you to calculate all the points. Sometimes calculate the maximum direct stress at B or A or A or something like that, okay. Sometimes you don't get an idea where it will occur maximum bending stress and all. It is better to calculate all the, I mean, all the corner points or by seeing the sense and magnitude of the bending moment, if you're able to locate a point means you can locate and calculate it. So to avoid all the confusion, you just calculate the coordinates for all the corner points. Just plug in those coordinates, x and y coordinates, get the values. From those values, you can pick, pick up the greatest or maximum diaxis due to bending. So this is the problem, okay. So let me pause to the next problem. Uh, this is the find the direct stress at A. This is given, you see. Find the direct stress at A due to bending. That is due to bending moment. When Mx is equal to 100 kilo Newton meter and My is equal to 50 kilo Newton meter. Directly bending moment is given. You don't have to bother about the sign convention or direction sense or whatever it is. Okay. So this is the Z section. This is the Z section. Okay. So this is not a symmetric section. This is an anti-symmetric section, anti-symmetric section. So uh, we, we have studied that if you take, for example, I section, the top horizontal uh, portion, we call it as the flange, top flange, and the bottom one, we call it as a bottom flange. Okay, same way here also, this is the top flange, and this is the bottom flange, and this is the web, the okay, vertical structure is the web, okay? Top flange, bottom flange, okay? Flange width, 100, top flange width, 100, Top flange thickness 20 millimeter and the bottom flange width 100 and the bottom flange thickness 20. Depth of Z section is 300. Depth of Z section is 300. And if the web height is nothing but from here, that is from here to here, 300 minus 20 minus 20. That is 300 minus 40, 260 will be the web height. Web height is from here to here because this is the web thickness. Why I'm saying this means sometimes the figure will not be given. They may give like top flange width, I mean top flange width, bottom flange width, top flange thickness, bottom flange thickness, web height, web thickness. You have to construct the Z section. You have to construct the Z section. Okay, so you should know this is the top flange, bottom flange. Okay, flange width, flange thickness. Web height from here to here is the web height. This is the web thickness. Okay, so here <clears throat> it is very easy to locate our centroid point. So I've not calculated any X bar, Y bar, and all. See, I have just shown, uh, I've divided this into three sections, one, two, three. And these are the individual section centroids, individual section centroids. This is the centroid for the Z section. How to locate a centroid very easily without any calculation by looking at the figure means, very, very simple. First step, you need to check whether the flange dimensions are same. Top and flange dimensions. See here, Top and bottom flange widths are same, 100 millimeter. Top and bottom flange thickness are same, 20, 20. You don't bother about the web height or web thickness. If top and bottom flange dimensions are same, means 
overall depth divided by 2 will be the location of the centroidal x axis and width i mean web thickness divided by 2 will be the location of the y y axis so the intersection of x x and y y becomes the centroid for this z section centroid for this z section okay so now let us uh, get into the problem so mx value is given uh, my value is given so we know the sigma z expression okay so we have located the centroid here okay centroid is here we have to find out i x x i y y i x y okay so now this is the expression so as i told you i x x is equal to b d q by 12 plus area into y minus y bar the whole square so here, so here uh, we are not calculating uh, y1, y2, y3, or y bar, or x1, x2, x3, or x bar, and all. Then how to calculate this y minus y bar? This y minus y bar is nothing but, see for the section 1, for example, bd cube by 12, 100 into 20 cube by 12, plus area 100 into 20, distance y minus y bar, it's nothing but distance from the vertical distance from the overall section centroid to the individual section centroid this distance is nothing but y1 minus y bar or y minus y bar for this section one and for the section two see b d cube by 12 plus area is this area distance see the overall section centroid and the section two centroid coincides so you will not get that area into distance square, the distance square term becomes zero. So the second term entirely gets vanished. You will get only b d cube by 12, b d cube by 12 for the second section. Come out here for the third section, 100 into 20 cube by 12 plus area 100 into 20. This is the distance y minus y bar, the whole square from the third section. And this distance, and this distance y minus y bar for section 1 and section 3 both are same but for section 1 it is positive for section 2 it is negative anyhow we are going to square it overall we can multiply by 2 like that only we have to calculate i x x so for three sections we have calculated see for the top section and bottom section both are having same value you can simply multiply by 2 plus for the web so this is the total value for i x x Similarly, I in Y, Y, D, B, Q by 12, or section 1, D, B, Q by 12, plus area 100 into 20. X minus X bar is nothing but the horizontal distance from the overall section centroid to the individual section centroid. So distance from here to the Y axis is nothing but X minus X bar. This will be the X minus X bar. Similarly, for the section 3, d b cube by 12 plus this area into this distance square x minus x bar square so simply you can multiply by 2 because you are going to destroy the negative value you get positive only you can multiply by 2 okay for the middle one again d b cube by 12 plus area distance will be zero because this section uh, section 2 centroid and the overall section centroid coincides okay so i y y this is that you can see here section one and section two having the same value this is a web section section two one section one section three sum it up this is the value i y y i x one area a one so this is the x minus x bar which is nothing but the negative value because this coordinate or this point is the second quadrant so x minus x bar will be negative and this is the y minus y bar is the positive for the first section. For the second section, A2, A2, whose centroid, overall centroid coincides the section 2 centroid, x minus x bar, y minus y bar is 0. So section 2 will not play a role in the IXY expression. Section 3, A3, 100 into 20, this is the x minus x bar, positive value, and this is y minus y bar, negative value. So you get IXY to be so minus 19.6 into 10 power 6. Okay, don't blindly judge that whenever you get z section, just look at section blindly. 
don't guess the value i x equal to zero and loss. Never, you will never get i x equal to zero for anti-symmetric structure, anti-symmetric structure. So, so these are the m x and the m y values given. So I am keeping the common powers ten power six everywhere. I x x i y y and i x y. That's why it will be easy for me to uh, cancel out the numerator and denominator. Just plug in all these values in the above expression, above expression. So you get. Uh, I think some term here is missing. So I don't know what term is missing here. Uh, anyway, I'll just correct it. Uh, yeah, some term is missing here. Okay, copy this problem. So at x is equal to 15 and y is equal to 150 because this is the point A versus the point A. This is the point A. Okay. So x value is minus 15 and y value is minus 150. If you substitute that value here, you will get the answer. Okay, you get the answer. Okay, you will get the answer. 